One of the most prominent and highest paid positions in the NFL is edge rusher, and it's that way for a good reason. These guys alter the passing game by getting pressure on the quarterback. It's a premium position in high demand, so let's take a look at the upcoming crop from the 2024 NFL Draft class. At number 10, I have Adisa Isaac coming out of Penn State, coming to 6'4", 247 pounds, and admittedly, I wasn't that high on him coming into the offseason process. And a big part of that was because I viewed him as a DPR. Uh, if you don't know, does a pass rush only. And I still think some of that is true, but it was really what he did at Mobile that it put him on the map for me and made me have to elevate him up in my rankings because he put on a show in Mobile. He was utterly dominant day one. Day two was a bit more up and down, more balanced, but then day three, it was like the cherry on top. Had a, just a very good day, uh, annihilated Porter Kingsley, Sue Matea a couple of times in the team drills. But if you're unfamiliar with Isaac, a big part of why he was so dominant there was because he is a he's a really good athlete. I know that the testing isn't necessarily like it, it's fine, it's good, it's high end, but it's not elite. But I would say he's got one of the best first steps in this class. He's pretty darn explosive, and he combines that with very violent hands. On top of that. He's got close to 34 inch arms. So it's like, okay, you got a guy who's got good athletic tools. He's got some length and some violence to him, not power. We'll get to that in a sec. But re what really makes it is how he approaches the pass rush. It, his, his game plan when it comes to rushing the passer, because he does such a good job of setting up his pass rush before he even has to make contact with a tackle. Like if you go back to his tape, you, you know he has this sick little like Euro step where he like uh, fakes outside, goes inside. He does a good job when he does initiate contact of being able to dip under the tackle and essentially bend the edge. Like it, his, how he approaches the pass rush is like, yes, I want that on my squad. He has active hands as well. So even if he gets caught up, he's very good at swiping, hitting with hand counters and whatnot and i mean shoot even at penn state he, he, he dropped back into coverage a little bit i think about like 70 times over the last two years which hey that's a, that's nice that's nice to know that he can do that is he is he more than just a spot dropper probably not but if he's on the field you probably want him rushing the passer however at mobile the thing that i thought he i would i guess say improved the most at was what he did as a run defender because he, in my opinion, wasn't that great of a run defender at Penn State. And a lot of that was because, well, he just lacks the play strength, struggles at the point of attack. He's not someone who can really set the edge. But at Mobile, he did a good job of winning run fits, of being patient and shooting the gap. And, I mean, you could point to someone we're going to talk about much later on the list, like Eliatu Latsu where he improved much as a run defender this year. And it wasn't because they were they, he got better at setting the edge or or they were asking him to hold the line. They're, it was because they were like, hey, shoot into the backfield and create chaos. And that's what Adisa Isaac was doing during this week. And I mean, his pursuit speed's good enough to where it's like, yeah, I'd rather him in that role. So it's like, Yes, I still feel like he's more of a DPR. That's kind of why I have the Julian Aquara comp, a guy that I really liked coming out of Notre Dame, but knew he wasn't going to be someone that could play in run fits early. And actually, he really never did. <laughs> but but uh, with the size, it's like, yeah, don't necessarily play him in run fits early. Maybe let him build his body a little bit more. Because uh, even as like a uh, run defender, he, he typically he sometimes will slip off tackles, though. That, that was definitely much better in 2023. I think that was down to about a 10% his tackle rate, but it is something you'll notice. And I mean, honestly, when it comes to the edge position, you're not going to be as, you're going to be much more lenient with missed tackles compared to like linebacker. It's like, hey, your job's to tackle. You better do it well. Well, with pass rushers, their job's to rush the passer. So if they have like a, a 20, 22% missed tackle rate, I'm honestly not going to be too worried about it is their job is to rush the passer. And guess what? Adisa Isaac, he did that very well this past season and in Mobile.
At number nine, I have Braylon Trice out of Washington. He was a three-star recruit from the 2019 class. And in high school, played not just football, but basketball, baseball, soccer, and even did a little karate. So, holy crap. However, first two years at Washington, he essentially just redshirted. And then he was kind of in the rotation in 2021, but he broke out in 2022 where he started every game and was a first team all Pac-12. Essentially, this past year, it was like rinse and repeat. And the first thing I kind of want to note here is at the combine, he came in at 6'4", 245 pounds. This man was playing at 270 at Washington. And it wasn't, oh, they listed him at 270. No, he looked every part of 270 at Washington. So he shedded 25 pounds for the combine, I'm assuming so he could run a fast time. And 472, not a great time, but I mean, you shed it away to, I, to be to at least be speedy. So I'm like, okay, if you're more nat, if you're like natural playing weight is about 20, 25 pounds heavier than this, what the hell would that 40 look like? Yeah, Lee. But if you're familiar with his background, this was someone who put on 50 pounds during the course of his collegiate career. So it's so Trice is someone who could gain and shed weight and essentially be as big or as small as whatever you need him to be and do so healthily. But I think his playing weight probably in the NFL is going to be closer to like a 260, 265. That's probably where he's going to be at which that's fine. That's good. He's got a good first step, very powerful, very violent hands. And you know what? I mean, as a guy that played karate, no kidding. This guy is, I, I bet both his hands are registered weapons, essentially. But he does a good job of uh, turning speed into power. And when he does hit that contact, he just keeps, he keeps driving his legs after initial contact. I freaking love that. I think... A guy, I think anyone who moves that continues to move their legs through contact, regardless of position, is a good thing. It just is. I say this every year. It's one of the things I actually love most, guys that just keep moving their feet through contact. He also does a good job of controlling the point of attack. He plays the run well. However, some of the little hiccups I have when it comes to him is the hands, the arm length. It's less than ideal, admittedly. It just is. He's not the most bendy guy. That's why I have him here as like, oh, he could be like ideal, like Y9. It's where the Yannick Nagakwe comp, uh, comp kind of comes in. But also, I would really, like, he, not the most flexible guy, and it kind of shows with how high his pad level is, like right from the snap. He just, it's almost, he's like just standing up instantly. And at that point, you're just kind of giving up leverage. You're letting blockers being able to kind of get under you get under your pads and especially it takes away from like because this is a cat with a good bull rush but it takes away from your bull rush if you're unable to get underneath the offensive tackles pads so it's some some of the things kind of like want him to get better at on top of the like okay what size are you gonna play at what is your real speed uh, i don't have if he tested at washington's pro day yet so these are just the combine numbers and I will say he is kind of a missed taco machine. So and I know I just said that like, you know, guys with 20, 22 percent missed tackle rate, it's not that big at the edge position. Well, he's hovering around like 26 for a career. So <laughs> it does matter a little bit. So you are going to like question his ability uh, to be on the field consistently for running downs. Uh, Cause also with that lack of length uh, and just him giving up leverage, like can he stack and shed blocks in the run game? I mean, there's a few question marks here. That's why he kind of dropped down my board. He was someone that was kind of fluctuating inside the first round. I think he was a top 50 for me. And then and now I'm kind of like, I've fallen in love with other pass rushers in this class. So he's just kind of like slowly like, just gone down my board but like i know he's at 81 but i'd be honestly willing to take him like midday too so back end of the second early third i think it's kind of the perfect area for him listen i know you love the nfl draft as much as i do and you're gonna want a nice 
hefty watch list of players during this college football season well go ahead check out my draft guide you can purchase it for only 30 bucks by venmoing or paypaling me links in the description it's a one-time payment and you get it for this whole draft cycle and forever and always technically it's a google spreadsheet so send me your email when you send the payment i'll get you hooked up you will see my current prospect rankings and big board my full evals and guess what it updates throughout the whole draft cycle so it's a great purchase and it's a great way to support the channel at number eight i have chris braswell out of alabama coming in at 6'3 251 pounds and he just this past season became the full-time starter now though you know will anderson got drafted but he was heavily used in the rotation even in 2022 but this year we actually got to see well, okay well, what what can this cat be as a full-time starter and it was pretty darn encouraging 56 pressures 13 sacks 18.2 pass rush win rate so i like it i love it and then let's just kind of talk about my journey with him this uh off season because he was someone else i was kind of floating around as a potential first rounder and we get to the senior bowl and i'm like what do you mean he has sub 33 inch arms because i was like i thought this guy had good length like because he seems like watch him. I was like, oh yeah, length won't be a problem for him. And then I think he came in with like 32 and 7 8 inch arms. Ultimately, it goes to his, uh goes to the combine and ends up clearing that 33 inch threshold because I guess I get I, I guess we change shapes and forms after a couple of weeks or something. I don't know. But regardless, I guess he hits that 33 inch, but he wasn't incredibly dominant at the senior bowl as you could tell like there's still a lot of rawness to his game when it comes to how he rushes the passer his game plan how he uses his hands because like he's got i think pretty like pretty powerful pretty strong uh hands he, he plays with a little bit of violence which i always like uh but you could tell that it's kind of like wacky inflatable two men uh when it comes to his hands the placement isn't always precise and you, you don't see many like hand counters and such from him and then he goes to the combine and this was someone who was on bruce feldman's freaks list this past season for oh for this he's he's gonna jump a he's gonna have a 38 and a half inch vert 33 and a half inch okay i mean still like his squad and his power clean that was recorded there at alabama are impressive but it was a little underwhelming and there listen there's a lot to like when it comes to chris braswell kind of talked about uh how, how fast and how violent his hands are the play strength is good he, he's got a pr pretty solid first step uh he was a much improved run defender this past year run defender and a tackler so you like that however again like he's very raw in terms of how he uses his hands how he approaches the pass rush his toolbox uh that he has this um stinking like false step when he uh when he comes off the snap which just kind of takes away from your burst so th there's some things that definitely need to be teached teached is that a word taught uh into him and th there's still a ways for him to be developed and i mean this was his first full year as a starter so I, I think it's fine. You, you can see the upside when it comes to Chris Braswell. And ultimately, I think that's what you're shooting for. If you remember, uh, Kamoko Ture, uh honestly was a really good player until injuries really screwed him there for the Indianapolis Colts. I see a little a little bit of that where he came into the league a little bit raw, but, but there was a lot of potential there to be had. At number seven, I have Jonah Ellis out of Utah. And that might sound familiar to you. That might because... Well, this cat has a bit of a lineage as his father, Luther Ellis, was actually a defensive tackle at Utah and a first round pick by the Detroit Lions in 1995. He actually spent 10 years in the league and that carried on to his children as Jonah's older brothers all at one point have been in the NFL with Caden uh, kind of being the most successful, probably know him as the current linebacker there for the Atlanta Falcons. But then you have Christian, who's kind of been on and off as a special teamer for the Philadelphia Eagles. And then uh, Noah Ellis, who actually just evaluated, what, uh, a few years ago. He was kind of this big, beefy defensive tackle out of Idaho. 
And I think I had a draftable grade on him. And uh, I think he got signed as a UDFA by the uh, Eagles. I don't think he's there with them anymore, though. But I think there's a chance Jonah Ellis could be the best of the bunch, at least when it comes to his brothers. Because this dude is a freaking twitched up athlete. Probably the most twitched up athlete in this class. He is golly he is quick everything about him is quick his feet his hands it, how he just like how he moves he's literally like a wind-up toy he just gah, gah, wind him up and then da, 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 da. that's how he is he's got a six win move or a spin move and the dude just moves exceptionally well on top of that i think he uses hands exceptionally well i do wish there were a little bit more violence a little bit more urgency when it comes to when he gets tangled up in engagement, I'll get to that in a minute though. Now, I was shocked because Utah listed him at like 6'2", like 240, 245. And I was like, he looks a hell of a lot bigger than that. Matter of fact, I think he's got better length than that. And then at the shrine, he measured out at like 6'2", 245. I was like, lies, lies I say. They even had him. At, uh, I think, just a smidge under 33-inch arms. Then the combine, uh, yeah, no, all confirmed. 6'2", 248, and 33-inch arms. I was like, golly, he looks so much bigger. And I think part of that is probably just because he's kind of a compact uh, player and whatnot. But still, man, he's got a good arsenal of pass rush uh, or finesse pass rush moves. But why I don't really have him much higher on my board here and... Uh, I think a lot of it is like, man, the play strength, I, I, it's not where it needs to be currently. He probably should add a I put bulk, but essentially just add more muscle, more functional strength to your frame. Uh, there are times where he just loses track of the ball carrier in the backfield and stops his rush. Like I remember it was a Pac-12 game. I forgot who Utah was even playing, but uh, where he just stopped his pass rush Got stuck in engagement, stops his pass rush out of nowhere. And these guys are just kind of like holding each other like this and doing nothing. And the quarterback still got the ball in the backfield. I don't know if he did. I don't know if he thought it was a run play. I don't know if he thought the quarterback already threw the football. But I was like, what the hell are you doing? Not a good look. And I kind of already mentioned I wish uh, he would play with a little bit more urgency and violence with those hands when he does get stuck in engagement. I would really like to say that, see that. So it's just he's not that polished of a prod uh a prospect just yet uh he, he has had some solid like start in time the last two years he had 10 games uh this past season before i think he tore his labrum and then the year before he had eight starts so uh, someone who just ends up needing polish and that's kind of why the comps noah spence someone who was like a former ohio state before he went to like what was it, like eastern kentucky western kentucky i can't even remember but he was just oozing with athletic tools. And while like you saw parts of that early in his NFL career, though he never really, really came together, Ellis, I feel, is like someone who is also entering the NFL with these athletic tools, but you're just kind of hoping you can develop those. So I kind of like him in the early to mid second round area. That's kind of why I have him at 57 currently on my big board at number six i have darius robinson adam mizzou coming in at six foot five 285 pounds yes he is a beefy beefy boy but don't be fooled the guy actually moves pretty darn well at his size even though the testing is eh, less than desirable but also keep in mind that those numbers that you currently see over there from the combine these are all numbers based on the edge rush position he's much bigger than your average edge, edge rusher by like 25 pounds so you also got to take all that into consideration but he kind of put himself on the map as probably like a top 50 top 64 type of player uh just because of how unstoppable he was at the senior ball like he put on a display of just uh just how good his length is how powerful his frame is how loose his hips are how he's able to sink low and get under despite being six five how he's able to get that leverage like it made for a very very 
intimidating pa- uh, bull rush, probably one of the best bull rushes in this class. And he keeps his hands active during uh, during engagement and just plays with that good motor, good sense of urgency. However, I will say, I know a lot of people are like, well, he won like every freaking rep at the Cedar Bowl in the one-on-ones. You got to keep in mind, those one-on-ones are kind of designed for edge players or defensive line players to win because you're not being given that much space. If like you looked at some of his pass rushes uh, on the edge or even the inside, how you are afforded a lot more ground and you're just not going to get that in the NFL. Like you just can't use everything. Like you can't use all this area. There's typically going to be blockers. The quarterback's going to move, shift. So I, I don't think his, at least his win rate at the scene role, it's not going to reflect what he's capable of in the NFL. Though I do think what we saw this past year where he was mainly used on the outside, and that's kind of why I list him at like this five tech, someone who could probably sit over top of the tackle. I think he could be very successful that. I don't think you put more weight on this guy and just play him interior full time because we kind of already seen him in interior in 2022 where his pass rush win rate was like, what, 11%? So primarily, you're not going to use this guy inside. You got to use him as this chess piece and set up favorable matchups for him to exploit. Now, again, not the most bendiest or most explosive pass rusher on this list because he's like 20 pounds lighter than all of them, but we already know that. Now, he does have a bad habit of dipping his head during engagement. I don't know if that's a core strength thing because often you'll see offensive tackles who lack core strength, they'll try to and they'll try to like imitate a sit-up, you know, where you're trying to force yourself back down. And that's it's, kind of, it's just kind of a bad habit to have because then you really you can't see what's going on, especially for a defensive player. You, you gotta know who has the ball and where they're at. So you want to be able to keep your head up. So again, kind of nitpicking a few things here and there, all in all, like. I, I like his ability. He's not going to be for every scheme, and you're definitely going to have to have a plan when it comes to how you deploy Darius Robinson. But I think the NFL has done a good job, at least with uh, my comp for him, Zach Allen. You'll probably remember him at Boston College, currently with the Denver Broncos. Yes, yes, Arizona, then Denver, where I actually thought Arizona and Denver have done a really good job of just putting him in the best case scenarios for him to be not only successful, but also very productive. At number five, I have Marshawn Nealon out of Western Michigan coming in at six foot three, 267 pounds. And he, he is a my guy in this class. And you may look at Western Michigan and be like, okay, well, he's kind of a smaller school group of five guy. But no, this dude probably could have played in the Power 5. Matter of fact, he was supposed to, as he was supposed to head over to Colorado with Deion Sanders last season. However, I guess Western Michigan made a very uh, an offer he couldn't refuse, I assume financially. But he decided to stay there at Western Michigan, had a good year, was second team all Mac. And the first thing that's going to stick out to you about Neyland is just how powerful this guy is. He is someone who wants just wants to just manhandle blockers he wants to in in, impose his will on them he wants to move guys against their whim golly that is a guy i want my on my team if i'm gonna tell you something uh probably has like the strongest hands in in this class He, he has some serious pop behind those mitts and actually has a very solid first step i mean that vert that broad number, those are pretty solid numbers for edge players, especially considering Nealon being a, a more heavy edge player. I mean, not Darius Robinson heavy, but at 267, that's a pretty heavy edge player nowadays. Also been a very good run defender the last couple of years. Plays with a good motor, does a good job of setting the edge and redirecting linemen uh, just upon engagement. Like all in, oh man, I am just a... Big, big fan. Probably has one of the scariest bull rushes in here. And something I didn't think was going to happen. His agility scores were so much better than I thought like thought they would be. Because 
Honestly, on tape, he's someone who's like, okay, the lateral ability is not going to be like great, but you're not going to expect that from a player like him. But the agility scores tell you it's not out of the realm of possibility that it's something he could get good at. So that's what I like seeing. Now, not the most flexible guy, not the guy with like the deepest uh, toolbox of pass rush moves, but he's very good at at the moves that he does have. And those those uh, with those moves, they typically have, they branch out, whether it's like secondary moves, hand counters and such like that. Can be a bit of a bull in a china shop sometimes and uh, plays very aggressive and just plays a little bit out of control and ends up on the ground. Uh, it kind of is what it is. It kind of comes with the territory of his type of mentality, but you're going to hope in that good coaching at the next level is going to eliminate at least most of that. Also with being a bigger, more powerful guy, not the not like the best finesse pass rusher, but you're not asking him to be. And that's why my comp for him is Frank Clark. And if you're not new to the channel, you know how much I have hated Frank Clark over the last few years. That he, when he was with the Chiefs, it was the biggest waste of money every year. I was like, they should cut Frank Clark. They should cut Frank Clark. So he'd be like, why would you comp one of your favorite guys in this class to Frank Clark? Because the big reason Frank Clark got a big contract at least got traded. I think it was traded, right? Yeah, the Seahawks traded Frank Clark to the Chiefs for a first and a second round pick. So yeah, he was a hot commodity at one point. There was a lot of upside when it came to Frank Clark. Unfortunately, kind of dudded out. Did have spurts over the years with the Chiefs. I mean, I would remember, did nothing all season. And then suddenly just have a good stretch during the playoffs. I think Nealon can be what... At least the Chiefs thought they were getting with Frank Clark. I think that it, that could be the, uh, not necessarily the ceiling, but I think that's the type of upside we're talking about with a player like Marshawn Nealon. At number four, I have Penn State's Chop Robinson coming in at six foot three, 254 pounds. He's currently 31 on my big board. And a big reason why is because he just has an elite first step, he explodes off the line of scrimmage he combines that with really good bend and he plays really low so he just gets good leverage and golly he's got a very filthy spin move and a lot of times he's so quick that blockers that tackles they don't really have time to get out of the blocks and then he matches that with very very good closing speed as you can see ran a 4 4 8 40 and the dude does play with a relentless motor, but kind of the big hiccup that people have with him is, well, there, there, there's some rawness to his game. He doesn't have many hand counters. Uh, he kind of lacks ideal length with 32 and a half inch arms. Uh, just overall, like his game needs some polish. There will be times where he kind of struggles to just to shed blocks. And that's kind of most notable in the run game. So you're probably looking at a guy that probably has to play maybe a DPR role early in his career, but that's fine because of how, like what he can develop into. And like athletically, he is that darn good. And he does have a lot of good habits. He is a guy that upon contact will keep moving his feet. He will keep churning. So like, and I honestly don't believe play strength is a problem when it comes to Chop Robinson. It's just you kind of got to refine parts of his game. And like if you're going to have him succeed early, you probably just kind of use him in the rotation as uh, that, that guy that just comes in on pass rushing downs and tell him to go and get after it while you kind of refine other aspects of his game. And I mean, he's young. You could also refine his body to some degree to where he can be at least be much better uh, as a run defender and get better at like shedding those blocks when he does get stuck in engagement like you gotta understand the potential is pretty high with a cat like this similar to what it was with like a vic beasley which is my comp for him currently so definitely someone to watch out for and number three i have alabama's dallas turner coming in at six foot five 247 pounds and I know I said Chop Robinson had the most explosive first step in this class. And I'm going to reel back on that sucker because it's Dallas Turner. Just look at those explosive numbers. 
40.5 inches in the vert and then 127 inches in the broad just utterly ludicrous and he does that with a very long frame at 6.5 he's got 34 and almost a half inch arms so he brings a lot of length i'll talk about how like you could just see he's a fast athlete with a 4.46 40 and i'll talk about that in a minute but he just has a natural feel for rushing the passer i mean that's why he was a first team all-american this past season but he has a natural feel he he can set up moves before he even has to make contact with the tackle and it, it, it's kind of similar to what like uh what i said about like adisa isaac where i was like oh he's got this sick sick like kind of euro step move and it, i don't know why man it just reminds me so much of y'all y'all remember when pedro martinez was pitching and then don zimmer char charged the mound pedro just kind of gave him a little ha ha that's kind of what Dallas Turner does with these tackles. Just, ha ha. And just kind of gets by him without really having to touch him. And I mean, the dude's just so explosive and fast. He's going to be putting these tackles on ice skates. But it doesn't stop there. I love how low that he plays. You play low. You play with good leverage. I love the leg drive. You already know that. I love guys that keep the feet moving through contact. But like legitimately, he has some really good closing speed he has really good pursuit speed and i mean i put this down as a weakness because i was like sometimes he kind of finds himself out of position versus the run and it's because a lot of times he's shooting those gaps so quick that he kind of like overruns the play but i've seen this this cat after like after instances like that make plays 30 to 40 yards down the field it's utterly ludicrous man i mean alabama even dropped this guy sometimes in coverage the he's just a fast athlete with like so much in terms of tools however there there isn't you do notice a lack of play play strength like he is someone that has to turn speed into power but a lot of times he'll get like there are times he's gonna get stuck in engagement that the hand placement just isn't good enough and he gets he get he gets the uh gets the clamps put on him like i've seen tight ends sometimes hold him at bay and he's young the dude is young he's still developing his body he's still developing as a player so fun fact it's only up from here that's why he's 14 on my freaking big board because he's freaking unbelievable i guess another guy who came to the league josh sweat where the eagles they took time to develop him and guess what he's a hell of a good player now at number two, I have Liatu Latu out of UCLA coming in at six foot five, 259 pounds. That's and that's just kind of addressed the neck first and foremost. He did have a serious neck injury back in 2020. He had it worked on by Dr. Robert Watkins, who also treated Peyton Manning. And let's be clear that, about this. Like, oh man, he was kind of forced to medically retire. Not necessarily the case it was just washington's doctors who weren't clear to play him when he decided he wanted to continue his playing career he had a bevy of offers after doctors checked him out and from everything that i've heard everything checked out positive when it came to the neck i'm not saying it's a non-issue but i don't think it's nearly as big as an issue to where it's gonna drop his stock some so just gonna throw that out there i think i kind of want to address also maybe something you noticed when you looked at the overlay i have old man khalil mack as his comp and you hear khalil mack and you're like you're a freaking idiot roshmo and it's like i said old man khalil mack because let's talk about old man khalil mack what is he because guess what Khalil Mack at right now at this point of his career, he's still he's still got some good bursts. He's still got some good explosiveness. It's just not nearly as good as it once was. So now he's got to be a bit more savvier as a pass rusher. And I mean, the, he's one of the best technicians in the game. He's one of the best finesse pass rushers in the game. Might be not nearly as productive as he once was, but he's still uberly productive just look at this past season and that's what i think liatu latu kind of like compares to now you know not the most explosive guy but someone who's light on their feet feels like a seasoned technician with 
how he uses his hands, how he approaches the pass rush, how he deploys secondary moves, how he uses hand counters. And a guy that's very light on his feet, just good finesse pass rusher. Like he's got a deep arsenal of pass rush moves. The man's good. He feels like a seasoned vet at this point. He, again, not like uh, not great length. It's sub 33 inch arms, but we've seen guys get by with less than 33 inch arms for the, uh, the edge position. I mean, you look at freaking, and again, this isn't a comparison or a comp, but I'm just saying, you look at Micah Parsons, one of the best edge rushers in the league. He has sub 32 inch arms, so come on, guys. <laughs> Uh, but also someone, and I kind of referenced this early, earlier in the video, I forgot where, but where he's kind of got this questionable anchor as a run defender. He's not a guy that's going to be asked to set the line, but where he found success as a run defender this year at UCLA was when he was, Hey, when he was asked to just go, go shoot the gap, get in the backfield and cause some chaos. And he did that very effectively and at number one it's jared verse out of florida state coming in at six foot four 254 pounds admittedly this is he is a my guy i remember going into the 2022 college football season when i did my preseason edge rankings for the 2023 nfl draft class i had jared verse at 10 and that was a lot of that was just based on how good he looked during florida state spring game and then he goes on and just kind of like emerges as a potential top 10 pick there in the 2023 draft. And I was like, man, I was so, I'm so happy I was early on this guy. And then he decides not to come out. I was like, well, shoot, man. Ah, <sighs> woof. That sucks. Well, at least we know he's going to be a top 10 pick in 2024. However, things didn't necessarily go as planned. Now, he was still a second team All American. But he started the year a little bit slower. He did. He didn't nearly look as explosive. But I think a lot of that was he put on the weight. He was playing at 250 in 2022. Then this past season, he got up to 260. And I think part of that was like, okay, well, I want to get better at defending the run. I want to find what my playing size will probably be in the NFL. I kind of want to find the happy medium. I want to put on healthy weight and also retain my explosiveness. Because, in fact... It's got a very explosive first step. And I think he's probably going to learn that's probably somewhere in between that 250, 260. It's going to be, I mean, he got down to 254 for the combine. And I think that's what it's going to be. But let's not pretend like, oh, he started the year slow, but he wasn't productive. He was hella productive. I mean, a 20.8% pass rush win rate. Hella good. 60 pressures. Hella good. 11 sacks. You guessed it. Hella good. Now let's talk about the freaking prospect. Because, oh man, I love him, man. There is no one better in this class turning speed into power. He has one of the best bull rushes you will see in this class. He plays with actually a lot of power in his frame. If you haven't looked at him, yeah, go take a look. The guy's jacked to the freaking gill, man. Truly, truly is, man. And... Oh, I love the full body strength. I love that this year he, he added actually some hand counters and secondary moves. Looks more complete as a pass rusher. And to me, he is probably the one of the more complete players in this class where, hey, he's he's got a little bit more explosiveness than like a Liatu Latu. Uh, but I would say he's got a little bit more season and polish to his game than Dallas Turner, who is more explosive. So I think he's kind of the happy medium and the more complete player there. Now, he improved as a tackler this past season as a run defender in general, but he did improve as a tackler. Tackle rate was still pretty high, but to be fair, it was lower than Liatu Latu and Dallas Turner. Uh, he was definitely a better player with his hand in the dirt than when he was a stand-up rusher. He, he just kind of fires out his stance a little bit better and a little bit stronger. So I I put him down as an every day or every down edge. But I think preferably you kind of want to see him in that base four, three type of role. Also, 
does struggle in pursuit versus the run. Uh, just uh, kind of a guy that that's just not gonna consistently make plays uh, along the sideline or maybe from like the backside. But again, kind of got better at that this past season. Like all in all, this is one of my one of my favorite players in this class. He's been one of my favorite players for the last two seasons. And I'm gonna be straight up. If you have Liatu Latu as edge one, cool. If you have Dallas Turner as edge one, cool. I think you could rank these three guys really anywhere. There's a reason why I have verse 10 and then my edge three, Dallas Turner 14. They're within, like all within those like four spots. You can rank these guys however you want. They're all good players and I'm not gonna fight you on it because uh, they're that good. Uh, they are. But hey, I know you want more draft content. Don't worry, I got you covered. Check out some of these videos down here on my final position rankings in the 2024 NFL draft class. But until next time, you be easy, my friends. Later.